Hello students, in today's session we are going to study the convention and green synthesis of adipic acid. Now these synthesis are generally done of aromatic amines. There are various kinds of it, specifically adipic acid. But now let us just first focus on aromatic amines in general. So there are certain chlorinated aromatics which are used in the synthesis of variety of aromatic amines. Firstly, I will want to describe you the term aromatic and amine. Aromatic compounds are the compounds which are derivatives of a benzene ring. So whenever we see a benzene ring and something which is added to it, it is known as aromatic compound. Now, in a way, there are various rules for a compound to be aromatic. They should be planar, they should be conjugated, they should be cyclic and they should follow Huckel's rule. Now, Huckel was a scientist who gave certain rules and certain criteria for a particular compound to be aromatic in nature. But that is not necessary to know right now. Right now we need to understand that aromatic compounds are nothing but benzene derivatives and amines is nothing but derivative of ammonia. Ammonia itself is NH3. So when we have primary amine, secondary amine, tertiary amine, we are simply removing the hydrogens from the ammonia and eventually making a compound out of it. So these amines are stuck to the aromatic compounds. However, chlorinated aromatics are known to be environmentally hazardous and are known to be persistent bioaccumulators. What do we mean by bioaccumulators? Substances which are not biodegradable in nature, substances which cannot sustain and which go on and on for years without even degenerating or decaying, accumulate in the environment. One of the most common example of such substances is plastic. The non-recyclable plastics are the ones which once made and once generated are filling the entire globe. There are various landfills which are filled with tons and tons of plastic. And thus these substances are known as bioaccumulators which accumulate in the environment. Chlorinated aromatics, that means there are aromatic compounds which are chlorinated in nature, that means chlorine is added to them. Such aromatic amines are also bioaccumulators. They are not environmentally friendly, they are environmentally hazardous. That means they are causing threat to the environment overall. Stern and co-workers at the Monsanto Corporation successfully proved by using nucleophilic substitution of hydrogen the use of chlorinated hydrocarbons can be avoided. Now it is very important for us to make sure that we do not use such bioaccumulators because we do not want them to be around us in the environment. And that is the reason why we have to find out better substitutes. And what are the better substitutes? What are the different substitutes? One of them was having nucleophilic hydrogenation reaction and because of that such environmental hazardous substances can be avoided. This research on feedstock replacement helped in removing the environmental concerns in the commercial preparation of aromatic amines. Now let us start focusing on the synthesis of adipic acid. In particular how the synthesis of adipic acid is done. Of course, there are two ways, conventional and the green synthesis. Significant advances have been made by Frost and Michigan State University in using alternative feedstocks coupled with biosynthetic methodologies. Now over here, what do we mean by feedstocks? Feedstocks are nothing but the reactants, the raw materials which are being used. If we use raw materials which are environmental friendly, eventually overall we'll also get the product which is environmental friendly. And that is the reason why advances were made by the Frost and Michigan State University 
to have environmentally friendly feedstocks. And not only the feedstocks, also the methodologies were biosynthetic. The procedures were environmental friendly. New synthetic pathways have been reported for the manufacture of adipic acid, ketchol, hydroquinone using glucose as the starting material in place of traditionally used benzene which is carcinogenic. Now in this point we need to understand what are the products, what are the reactants. Now there are synthetic pathways that means there are different ways of making a particular compound and they are useful and they are helpful in the preparation of adipic acid, ketchol and hydroquinone. Adipic acid, ketchol and hydroquinone all three of them are organic hydrocarbons. They are organic compounds and they are aromatic in nature. That means they are derivatives of benzene ring. So traditionally at first they used to make it with the help of benzene. So they used to take benzene and combine benzene in such a way that the product that we get is adipic acid or ketchol or hydroquinone. But benzene itself is carcinogenic in nature. What do we mean by carcinogenic in nature? Carcinogenic means cancer causing. If there are certain substances which cause cancer or which are cancer causing, then they are hazardous. They are harmful for the environment, they are harmful for the mankind, they are harmful for the human civilization. And that is the reason why it is very important to replace them, to use something else in place of them. And that is when they started using glucose. Glucose itself is a very good option. Glucose is the simplest sugar, it is the simplest carbohydrate. And glucose can be easily broken down or easily be converted into a different kind of energy. That is what our body does. Our body takes glucose and converts it into energy. How is it possible for us? Because glucose is easily degradable. And that is the reason why synthesis of adipic acid has become greener, has become better, more environmental friendly once the carcinogenic benzene, that means the cancer causing benzene, was replaced by simple glucose, which we can get in abundance, which is not bioaccumulator and which can be degraded very easily. Traditional and alternative synthetic pathways for the manufacture of adipic acid. Now let us see the different pathways for the manufacture of adipic acid. The traditional pathway. So if you see over here, traditionally the first thing I have is benzene. If I have a cyclohexane with three alternating pi bonds, which over here they are shown in the form of a circle, that particular compound is known as benzene. To this benzene, if I add nickel and Al2O3 and then I give 370 to 800 PCIs, that means some amount of pressure, the pi bonds break off. If the pi bonds break off, what will I get? I'll get only cyclohexane because the resonating pi bonds in the middle have broken off. To this, if I add carbon monoxide in presence of oxygen and I increase up the pressure to 120 to 140 PSI, the cyclohexane gets converted into cyclohexane known plus cyclohexanol. It is very important for us to understand over here what is cyclohexane known and cyclohexanol. Own is nothing but ketone. C double bond O is a ketonic group. It's a ketone. And COH is an alcoholic group. So now this is cyclohexane all. Alkanol. It's an alcohol. So if I take normal benzene and then in presence of carbon monoxide and oxygen, I give more pressure. Oxidation takes place. Oxidation is nothing but addition of oxygen. 
and if oxygen is being added, I get two compounds as the product. One is ketone and one is alcohol. Ketone is known as cyclohexanone. Alcohol is known as cyclohexanol. Now this in presence of copper and NH4VO3, an acidic medium that is HNO3 gives us adipic acid. So if you have a look on adipic acid over here, adipic acid is nothing but COH twice. On the other hand also COH twice. And then there is a chain of carbon compounds. Now this is the traditional way or the conventional way of making adipic acid using benzene as the feedstock, benzene as the raw material or the raw reagent. There are different ways of doing this particular reaction and we will also see the other green way as well. Alternative greener pathway. Now alternative greener pathway is nothing but when we replaced the normal conventional benzene feedstock with the glucose feedstock. Now glucose feedstock is nothing but having a raw material of glucose. Let us see the reaction. If you see over here, you have D-glucose. What do you mean by D-glucose? Always remember in chemistry, the hydrocarbons can be classified into L and D. L means levo, D means dextro. Levo means left, Dextro means right. Now there are certain compounds in chemistry. These compounds are known as optically active compounds. And these compounds have the potential to change the direction of a plane polarized light into either left or right. If an adipic acid over here, if I have written D-glucose, that means if I take a container of D-glucose and I pass light through it, the light will go straight inside the container. But once it comes outside the container, it will be tilted towards the right direction. And that is the reason why we have written D-glucose. To this D-glucose, if you add E. coli, you get 3 hydro -shikimate. That is nothing but a benzene ring destructured. So over there on the top, you have a double bond. On top of it, you have CO2H. On meta positions, you have OH and double bond O. And on the para position, again, you have an OH. Again, to this, if you add E. coli, you get cis, cis, muconic acid. Muconic acid is nothing but COOH, COOH. And in the middle, you have two double bonds. These two double bonds are alternating in nature. That is very important to have alternating double bonds. That means the double bonds are not together. They are separated by a single bond. To this, if you add platinum hydrogen and 50 PSIs, you get your adipic acid. That is COOH and COOH on both the ends. And in the middle, there is a straight chain. Now, the only difference between the conventional way and the Greener way is we have changed the feedstock, we have changed the raw material. In the conventional way, we are using benzene and benzene itself is carcinogenic in nature. It is a cancer causing reagent. And in the alternative greener way, we are using glucose, which is very environmental friendly and can easily break off. The traditional pathway which uses benzene which is a facile fuel based on carcinogenic feedstock. So that is, it is not only a facile fuel, that means it is not only a non-renewable source of energy, but also it is carcinogenic in nature. So it is not only harmful to the environment, but also to the mankind and the human civilization. The alternative pathway which uses glucose is a renewable feedstock which is absolutely safe.
it is safe when it comes to the environment it is safe when it comes to the human beings that means it is absolutely safe so with this we understand the conventional and the green synthesis of adipic acid we also see the difference between them and we understand that the difference is because of the raw material used just a little change in the raw material and a little change in the process can bring out a huge difference a huge positive impact on the environment as well as human civilization thank you